Okay, so the last two questions are related to each other. Um, we want to find the average slope for the Bear River watersheds that I gave you to work with. And then we're going to compare the average for each watershed and just report the highest. So what I'm talking about is a set of watersheds, and here we've got the elevation model. And hopefully you can see right away that we have one watershed with incomplete information because it's hanging off the DEM. So this watershed already, even though I gave it to you, you have to say, no, we don't have the information to include this in our analysis. Um, if you needed to include this watershed, you would have to go in and pull the elevation model for Idaho and, and stitch them together and make this a seamless uh, DEM. So this, as it stands, is not acceptable to include in our analysis. So we're dealing with the southern set of watersheds. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is calculate slope for our elevation. Um, I've just done this. So we'll just set it up and make sure that everybody's on the same page. I like to use just the spatial analyst tools. Input raster is gonna be the DEM. I'll put raster, remember I like to name things um, using the root at the beginning and then putting uh, the extension for the derivative surface at the end. So slope, and I'm going to cal calculate it in degrees. So slope in degrees. And then all of that can be left, run it, and we end up with a slope raster. And I made the watersheds just uh, no fill so that we can compare and get just a sense for the distribution of the slope values. Dark is uh, the steep and light is shallow slopes. So that gives us a sense and then we're going to run a tool called zonal statistics as a table. Zonal statistics, the reason I ask this for the what do you know is this is the single greatest uh, raster summary tool of all time and um, if it hadn't been invented I just wouldn't be the human that I am today. It's one of my favorite things to do is run zonal statistics. So there you have it. If I could spell it, it'd be even better. As a table. So the reason we run it as a table is this allows us to have multiple outputs. Uh, zonal statistics is just kind of a one and done thing, but this is gonna give us a standalone table with a result for each individual watershed, which is what we want. Um, if we use unique identifier. So the first input is the zone. Um, you can not get hung up on the word raster. These are the zones that we're in zones that we are interested in, and so these will be our watersheds. The zone field, this is where we have the power to say we want one summary statistic for all of them, or maybe they're designated, um, you know, East Fork, North Fork. We could find a unique identifier that would give us the average for these four and the average for these six or whatever it is. But we want an individual result for each watershed, so our zone field has to be unique. Um, in my question, I ask you for the HUC12 name. And so let's use the HUC12 name as our zone field. This is going to give us an individual average for each one of these HUC12 watersheds. Um, all right, so the value raster is our slope. That's the, the raster whose values we want to be summarizing or, or uh, simplifying. And then our output table, again, I would call this something more similar, like, um, you know, Bear Lake, Watershed, Slope, Summary Statistics, but abbreviated. We're going to use all the statistics types. And we get a standalone table. We're going to ignore that first one. And this is off your screen, but I'm just right-click opening. And what we want to make sure is that we have 10... Uh, records in here because we need a unique identifier for each one but we want to make sure we're not using the result for this guy up here so this is oh we could use our pop-up that would make a lot more sense here so we're gonna pop up and identify that this is our huck 12 name is Garden City Canyon, and so we just want to make sure that we don't include Garden City Canyon in our results. So we're going to look through, and we've got our mean slope. If we sort that descending, 
first verifying that uh, Garden City Canyon is not the steepest, uh, we can see here that the outlet of the East Fork of the Little Bear River Canyon is our steepest of all the watersheds with a mean slope of 21 degrees.